In this video segment, I'm going to go through the steps of importing a survey topography from a DWG file that I have for a residential lot. In a related video, I traced over this lot just using a CAD line and converting that to a terrain perimeter. If you've paid for a survey and you get a printout something that's on your screen, make sure you ask the surveyor for the digital file, which is typically a DWG file. Let's go through the steps of importing that file and being able to generate the site plan and the 3D for the terrain. I'm starting with a brand new plan and I have my layer set and my annotation set to plot plan. That just helps me have the scale and the layers turned on that I want. Under the file menu, I'm going to choose import and I'm going to choose DWG. Then I'm going to browse out to the location on my disk where I have saved this file. So let's browse out there and this is a file. Again, this is what my surveyor sent me and let's go ahead and choose that file. And one of the things that I usually do is sometimes you'll get a lot of lines in here is I'll convert those lines with shared endpoints to convert those to polylines. You may see some of the lines don't connect and if you check that box that will help won't always solve it, but it will help. On the next panel for this dialog, you'll notice that there are several layers in here, and many of them may not be relevant, and you may need to ask your surveyor exactly what you have. This one's a little bit obvious. If you scroll down here a little bit, you can see all the different layers that are in here. The contours major is usually a common one that is used by the surveyors. I'm going to convert that to my elevation data. That way, when I generate my perimeter, the terrain elevation data will come in. The other one that was pretty obvious in this case is the property boundary, and I'm going to convert that to my terrain perimeter. On the next panel, I'm going to go ahead and uh, accept the defaults. In this case, I'm going to go to the advanced layers mapping panel, which allows you to convert these different items in here to different layers. The only one I'm going to really worry about is on that contour major. I want to make sure that's on my elevation data. So come down, find that terrain elevation data, select that. And again, on the property boundary, if I choose that, I'm going to go ahead and set that to my terrain perimeter. And when they're on those layers, you'll be able to see it in 3D. The rest of these layers, if I'm smart about it, some of them are obvious. I'm going to go ahead and map them to the appropriate layer. Otherwise, they're going to come in with these unique layers in here, which may be okay, or you may want to clean them up at a later time. And then finally, on the panel here, I'm going to change this to import into feet and then go ahead and finish that up. Now notice that I'm getting a warning in here that says that it couldn't import the lines for the terrain perimeter and they're not closed. So that means I didn't get a terrain perimeter generated. Let's zoom in and take a look at how to fix that. I'm going to zoom in on one of the corners and you'll notice that if I select one of the lines, all I'm going to do is click on this diamond and see if it connects. Now you'll notice that it actually highlighted the adjacent line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the other corner where that intersects and I'm going to click on that line. Sometimes you may need to pull that line back and snap it into place. Once I've done that, it actually closed that polyline for me. Now since it didn't convert it to a terrain perimeter initially, I actually have to go through that step now in the lower edit menu, I'm going to convert that polyline to a terrain perimeter and now that's going to generate the terrain perimeter. Now that that's converted to a terrain perimeter in the 3D view, you can see that the terrain perimeter is now generated and it has all of the terrain elevation data that came in when we mapped that over. Now for the development on this particular lot, I made the decision that I want my house to be parallel to this lot line at the top of the screen. And I want to make sure that I rotate my lot because I don't want to draw my house at a strange angle and complicate my life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the terrain perimeter and on this particular line, let's go ahead and open it up and let's see what that angle is. In this case, it's 28.58 degrees. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to bring in an Excel spreadsheet and let's go ahead and take a look so we can use this math. So I've pasted that information in here, 28.58, and I've got 90 degrees at the top, and I've subtracted the 28 from 90. I also did it from 180 in case I need to know if the angle is reversed. So that means that I'm going to rotate this at 61.42 degrees. So I'm just going to copy that value here. Let's pull that back off to the side. I'm going to select with Control-A on the keyboard 
every single thing that we have imported. And I'm going to go ahead and use the transform replicate in the bottom section of the menu here. Let's go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to select that I want to rotate that. And again, I'm just going to paste that value of 61.42 in here and rotate that in the dialog. Now what's happened here is it's rotated it and if you go into this angle right here it's now at a 90 degree angle and I can easily now draw my house so that it is straight up and down in the design and it makes it much easier process for me. Now the next step I want to do is I want to put our north pointer in the design. Let's go ahead and place our north pointer and we'll just come over here and draw it off to the side and remember let's let's open this up. Let's take a look at the angle and if I bring in the spreadsheet over here, the in this case that angle's reversed. So I want to take that original angle that we had of 28.58 from 180 degrees. It was 151.42. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that in to the angle over here. And then my north pointer is now exact based on the rotation of this lot so that this lot line is at 90 degrees. Now the next thing is when we imported this lot, the text objects came in for the bearing and length of the lot. So this is just a text object. Let's go ahead and choose the terrain perimeter and turn that information on to make sure that we have it exact. So let's open it up and on the line style down here, let's show the length and show the angle. And as long as I'm in here, I want to change the uh, color for that terrain perimeter. That's a little crazy the way it imported. We'll just set it to be black. Once I have that set and we turn it on, notice that the information is in fractional feet and we don't have the quadrant bearing information. To get that is through my default for my CAD information. So let's go ahead and open this up. Let's change that unit display from fractional feet to decimal feet and let's also indicate that there are two decimal places. And then finally I want to make sure that quadrant bearing information is selected. Once we've done that then that information should match and if we zoom out here, let's go ahead and pull that text box out from the surveyor and see that it matches. And we'll pull his quadrant bearing information down here and see if that matches as well. So it looks like the information is pretty close, just slightly off on that. Now that I know that information is accurate, I'm just going to delete the original information. And I'm probably going to go through and clean this up quite a bit. Again, if I would have um, been a little bit better prepared when I imported it and known all of those layers, I could have mapped those during that import process. Now I've gone back and I've cleaned up those layers and I've overlaid the information on my site plan. I haven't put my house on there yet, but I put my setback and I've also set my legend up. So somewhat to follow the steps that we have here is we imported the DWG file and we did the mapping to make sure we got at least the terrain data elevation and also the terrain perimeter, mapped that to the boundary and went through and made sure they were on the accurate layers and then rotated it. I copied the angle before I did the rotation and then when I put my north pointer in there, I used that information to set my north pointer exact. So when you get your surveyor and make sure that you ask for the DWG file and then you can go through this import process and save yourself some time in drawing your site plan.